Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm coming to you with my Booktubeathon wrap up. So it's been about a week since the Booktubeathon ended, and I did vlogs almost every single day of the Booktubeathon. Unfortunately, I was going to do a vlog for the very last day as well, and I vlogged, but I had a migraine that day, so I didn't have too much footage to begin with. And then when I started going to edit my footage, it ended up being corrupted. So that took me a few days to try and figure out until eventually it just literally wouldn't work. So I became really frustrated with it and decided just not to upload that video because it wasn't working at all. So unfortunately, I didn't get to put up that day seven vlog, but I have six total vlogs. If you'd like to go and watch any of those, I'll leave all of them linked in the description box and some of them on the screen. Since I didn't get to give you guys that very last vlog, I decided that I would just do a wrap up to tell you guys everything that I read, how much reading I accomplished, which challenges I accomplished and all that. And if you don't feel like watching vlogs, but you still wanna know how I did during the Booktubeathon, you can still watch this video. Before I get into the books, I just wanna say that I really appreciate all of your support with the vlogs and everything. I had a really fun time making them and it means so much to me that so many of you also enjoyed really watching the vlogs and a lot of you have asked me to continue vlogging and I definitely will be. Even if it's not book related, I will definitely try and vlog more often so that is something you can look forward to. But without any further ado, let's get into all of the books that I completed during the Booktubeathon. So on day one, I actually completed three books which was the best I did all week. But the very first book that I read was Smoke and Shadow Part 1, the Avatar The Last Airbender comic, and then I read Smoke and Shadow part two, which is the second one following the first one. These are like the sixth or I don't even know what number in like the entire comic series. They're not the first comic, so you definitely have to read the other comics before you can read these. These were just the ones that I hadn't read yet. And also because a lot of people have asked me this, you do have to watch the TV series before you can read the Avatar comics. You cannot read these without watching the series because you will be entirely spoiled and completely confused. But I highly recommend that you do both because as you all know, Avatar The Last Airbender is like my favorite thing in the entire world and the comics are also fantastic. I gave both part one and part two four out of five stars and I really really enjoyed them and I actually did end up reading part three as well but I just didn't read it during the booktubeathon which I also gave four out of five stars in case you were wondering. I don't know if I actually completed all of the challenges because I didn't end up reading seven books. I only read six books but I tried to complete as many of the challenges as I could and I think I used this one for reading an entire book in one day or reading a book with a person on the cover. It's one of those two because I read them in one day and I read it and it had a person on the cover. So it can count as either. <laughs> the next book that I completed on day one was Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. This is probably my favorite thing that I read the entire book Tubathon. I adored this book. It follows the story of this girl who has a web comic that she created that's very, very popular and famous. It's called Monstrous Sea and she writes this comic and it's like the most important thing in her life, but no one really knows who she is outside of just like her screen name as the author. Then one day this boy moves to her school who happens to be the most popular fan fiction writer of her webcomic. And the two of them meet and she knows who he is, but he is unaware of who she is. And that kind of creates a lot of problems. The main story revolves around Eliza and just her personal growth and her trying to figure out if she should tell this boy what her real identity is. Eliza also deals with anxiety and that was one of my favorite things about this book because I've mentioned this before, but I also deal with anxiety. So getting to read about that in this book was just fantastic because I could relate to her in so many ways and it was so refreshing. This book is very very similar to Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell but personally I think it's actually much better than Fangirl. I adore Fangirl as well and I think it's a great book but I just related to this story on a different level and I love it so so dearly and I cannot recommend it enough. I'm also going to be doing a review for this book very soon as well because I liked it that much and I just want to talk more about it. But I gave this one a five out of five stars and I'm just so happy that I read it. I honestly don't know what I'm counting this one for in like the challenges that I've completed. I think I'm just gonna do that at the end so I'll tell you guys which book I used for which challenge because I think I completed most of them but a lot of them kind of cross over into multiple different challenges but we'll go over which challenges I completed at the end of this. <laughs> On day two of the booktubeathon I completed We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. This book follows the story of this girl named Marin who has recently dealt with a very great loss in her life and because of that she's struggling with a lot of grief and Marin kind of leaves her entire life behind and moves to school all the way across the country. And then one day her best friend Mabel comes and visits her and kind of forces her to confront the grief that she's been going through. Marin and Mabel also kind of have a romantic history with each other and they also have to deal with those feelings. So it's about Marin both dealing with her grief as well as her feelings for Mabel. I really enjoyed this book in the way that it dealt with grief. I thought that it was really heart-wrenching and very, very real. If you've ever gone through something similar to Marin's situation, then I think this is definitely a very good 
good book to read. However, personally, I didn't like this one as much as I was expecting to, unfortunately. I really liked the relationship that Mabel and Marin had, and I loved the conversations they had. I especially loved Mabel. She was just a great character. But my main problem with this book was that it was just very heavy with the exposition. Like, I felt like too much was being described to me, and I couldn't get to feel as much as I wanted to. I simultaneously wanted more of the story with less of the descriptions, if that makes any sense. But nonetheless, I still enjoyed the book, and I'm very happy that I read it, and I definitely recommend it if you're interested in reading something that has to do with grief. But overall, I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Moving on to day 3 and 4 of the Booktubeathon, I actually didn't end up completing anything those two days. I read some on day 3, I read pretty much nothing on day 4, so I didn't complete a book either of those days, which was unfortunate. But on day 5 of the Booktubeathon, I did complete a book, and that was History Is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. Again, I read another book about grief. I don't really know why I read several sad books during the Booktubeathon, but for whatever reason, I decided to. <laughs> this book follows the story of this boy named Griffin who has recently lost the love of his life, his ex-boyfriend, in a drowning accident, and now he's left to deal with that grief. The story is also told in both the past and the present, so we get the past where Griffin is describing his relationship with Theo, his boyfriend or ex-boyfriend, and um, how they got together and what their relationship was like and all their firsts and everything like that. And then we also get the present timeline where Theo is now dead and Griffin is dealing with that literally in the moment. So the format is very well done in my opinion and I really, really enjoyed that aspect of it. The story itself was also extremely heart-wrenching. It was beautiful. It made me cry several times. It was just a really, really good story. I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars. It wasn't a five star for me just because I didn't feel as much as I really wanted to with some of the parts of it, but it was still a fantastic book and I would highly, highly recommend it if you feel like crying and you feel like reading something sad. If you want a happy book, don't read this one just yet, but if you're in the mood for a good sob, definitely would recommend picking it up. <laughs> and finally, the very last book that I completed during the Booktubeathon on day six was No Matter the Wreckage by Sarah Kay. This is a collection of poetry by Sarah Kay, and Sarah Kay is one of my all-time favorite poets, and I absolutely adored this. I gave it five out of five stars. It was fantastic, just as good as every other piece of poetry I've ever read by her. If you're looking for some new poetry to read, I definitely recommend this one. It is very relatable, and it's very simplistically written, but her metaphors are just so beautiful beautiful and so well executed. It's unlike any other poetry I've ever read. There's just this realness to her writing that I can't even describe. You just have to experience it for yourself. I just can't recommend this one enough. It is just exceptional. So yeah, those are all of the books that I completed during the book Tubathon, a total of six books. Unfortunately, I didn't get to complete a seventh book, which would have been Wonder Woman, which I made some progress into, but I just didn't finish it. But now, as for the challenges that I completed with each book, I'm going to use No Matter the Wreckage to complete the read an entire book in one day challenge. History is all you left me for the book you bought because of the cover challenge, because I bought this one for two reasons. I mean, I really wanted to read it, but I bought this edition because of the cover. The Avatar The Last Airbender comics for the read a book with a person on the cover, because they have multiple people. We are okay to complete the read about a character who is different from you challenge. And finally, I'm going to use Eliza and Her Monsters for the read a hyped book challenge. So that is it for my wrap up of the Booktubeathon. I completed almost all of the challenges. The only two I didn't complete were the read an entire book outside and the complete seven books. So I'm pretty okay with this. This is a decent number of books in one week and I really did enjoy everything I read. But that just about wraps up my wrap up. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below if you participated in the book Tubathon. How many books did you complete? How many challenges did you complete? And did you have a good time? <laughs> Once again, I hope you all enjoyed watching my vlogs throughout the week and I know that I had a really good time making them. So thank you all so much for your support with those. But that is it for this video. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media. All of my links are in the description box as always, but thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!